Listen, um, uh, a black student at the University of Virginia was arrested and charged in the shooting deaths of three members of uh, the school's football team. And uh, he also uh, shot and wounded two other people. Uh, Christopher Darnell Jones Jr. Uh, is 22 years old and a former member of the school's football team. Uh, he killed uh, Devin Chandler, uh, Lavelle Davis Jr., and Deshaun Perry as they returned from a field trip. And we still don't know why. So once again, here we are talking about uh, gun violence. And uh, so here's a partial list of gun violence on college campuses in 2022. Uh, Xavier University, May the 31st, three people uh, are shot, one killed uh, during a high school graduation ceremony held on campus at Delaware State University, September the 3rd. Uh, Two students are shot outside the rec center doing what the police say was an on-campus robbery. Uh, Clark Atlanta University, October the 16th. Three students are wounded in a drive-by shooting outside of uh, the Clark Library. Uh, Livingstone Livingstone College, October the 16th, shots fired into the crowd at a homecoming concert on campus. Two people were wounded and several others uh, were hurt. Uh, Southern University, October the 21st, 11 people are injured. Uh, Ten of them students uh, when a gunman uh, fires into a fraternity house party just off campus. Whew, that's a lot. A uh, lot, lot of stuff going on. And, you know, uh, my son comes home. My son is a student at Alabama State. And he, he tell me all of these stories that are just absolutely horrible and horrific and i just pray for my son's safety and uh you know and try to talk to him every day or every other day and try to advise him on what to do uh i had to get my kids in situational training class and i just had to pay for it because it ain't even uh, about getting a gun or whatever and taking tactical training situational training trains you what to do in certain situations to save your life and what to look for before you even walk into a situation or the energy in the room shift or the energy don't feel right um i was i was in atlanta airport and and i didn't meet anybody this particular day and i met this lady uh miss delaney or uh, whatever she walked up to speak and say hey i listened to the morning show i want you to meet my son uh my son just lost his father and uh, i befriended them and, and and the spirit my spirit said hey you know it'll be okay to exchange numbers these are good folks because you know brett sometimes uh you can just have that spirit of discernment you know when people just good people hey here's my number uh uh, latoya take my number keep in touch or whatever and just the text messages that i would get on saturday morning um you know for devin's football game uh, his first game at university of wisconsin watching on facebook going live and uh hey i need you to speak to devin about this and you know, uh, hey, Delaney, whatever you need or whatever, you know, let me know. And just trying to support a child and be something to a kid that lost a father. And, you know, yesterday morning I get a text message uh, saying that he was killed. And and when I tell you, I was, I was just Jesus. absolutely more devastated. I was devastated, but more devastated for her. Mm. Just saddened. And, and and just devastated, not just for her, the other two parents um, uh, who, who kids got killed and the kids that got wounded and the parents of the shooter who probably like, what the hell, don't even be- like, can't believe, you, you know, and we send our kids out to college and college is supposed to be a safe space and a way to get out of whatever hood we from to try to be, to do better. And it's just all these acts of violence and everybody have a gun kids walking around with guns hanging out of their back pockets now and this generation is lost you know what i'm saying i i just i I don't know i'm trying not to tear up and talk about it because damn it's it's tough man i've got my two daughters are in college well man lyric and harmony and i just tell them you know don't get into any kind of confrontation with anybody if you see any confrontation keep it moving uh, keep your head on a swivel. Don't even. We always talk about don't text and drive. Mm-hmm. You can't even text and walk now. Like yep. and when you're walking across campus, man, just stay focused on awareness. all your surroundings. Awareness, absolutely, until mm-hmm. you get to where you to your destination. You know, you know the part that hurt me, uh, Maria, and you got kids. 
Yeah. Toya, you got kids. Yep. Brett, you, you know all of this stuff. Here's the part that really hurt me. For all mothers that have lost children to gun violence. You take them to the Little League football game. I got to go buy a helmet. Got to go buy a chin strap. Got to go buy socks. Elementary school graduation. Let me go get you some pink oil moisturizer where I can do your hair. Hair bowls, barrettes, a haircut, sitting up in the barbershop. Got to go to high school. High school graduation. Middle school graduation. This, that. Baseball game, little league football game, doing this, all this, all this ripping and running to only look forward to picking out a damn casket. Mm. That makes me mad. Mm. That makes me angry. That's that's the part that hurt my heart. Every single mother. And I'm telling you something. I've seen it. When when, when my little nephew, Kevin Felder, got killed, got stabbed to death. His mother was so distraught. I rode in the limousine trying to comfort her because that was my high school classmate. She wanted me to be with her. And we got out of the limousine and she went into the bathroom, couldn't even walk into church. She went into the bathroom and laid on the floor and she looked up at her dad and said, do I have to do this? He said, Mr. Felder said, yeah, we got to do it. Me and her dad had to pick her up and walk her down the aisle and stand her up at her son's casket. I, I have never... And it just it it just brings back it just triggers everything. It triggers my daughter being on campus, uh, uh, being a college student that got shot. It triggers my son is on campus right now. It triggers I got shot. It triggers how these mothers feel. All of these mothers they got to bury these kids, and it's us. It's us. I know white is bad racist police officers out there but the but it's us That's the part and what the hell is going about. on to the point because our generation didn't do it what is the difference between how we were raised and how they are raised these kids have absolutely no conflict resolution or uh, uh, how to deal with conflict and resolution and how to solve problems everybody pull out a gun and it's all in them it's, it's, it's the promotion in the music is what they what they send on their phone video game all of the stuff they think this is the way to handle a problem the emotional yeah. instability and in access S- say that that again. The, it's the emotional instability when some they're not people aren't emotionally stable you know what i mean and they're reactive and when you have access to you know a gun or something that you know, you feel you can win whatever this battle is or whatever this can help mm-hmm. you get over. That's what you're, you're going to go to. You mm-hmm. Kids are so reactive and they have access to everything. We didn't have access to everything. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? We didn't have that. So that's what the difference mm-hmm. is. You have access to the guns. You have access to social media. You have, And people, of course, if you're posting on your stories, if you're posting this, I know where to find you. Mm-hmm. So now I'm in a bad mood. I'm in this, you know, I'm in my bag. I'm in my feelings. I'm not emotionally stable, so I'm going to go get this thing I have access to and do what I feel at the moment. Oof. Yeah, and there's so many examples of how people resolve issues with guns. There's so many examples of that. And, you know, they say what you repeat what you don't repair. Mm-hmm. And I think that we really need to decide, okay, do we want to continue to support artists that perpetuate gun violence in in, in their Talk, you know, talk about violence and stuff like that. I think it's really time to say, you know what? Enough is enough. You can make a hit record without talking about killing somebody else. The influence, I think that people really need to understand the influence that they yeah, have on Yeah, because the record companies are not going to do it. They're not going to stop Mm-mm. promoting that kind of music. we got to stop it on this end. But as a parent, also, <laughs> that's of kids not in reality, that age, y'all. you got but you, you got, you got to under, you got to know These kids what your gonna, kids have access to They're not going to gonna stop making this music. Oh, These no. kids that are in the game already are not listening to their parents. they got their own money. They've grown. They live their own life. Yeah. Whether they're 14, 18, they've grown. So they're going to do what they want to do, and they're going to continue to make this music these these labels are going to continue to let them make this music. This is what these millennials want to hear, and they like to hear it. But where so, do the parents come in? So I guess it's going to be the parents who are going to allow or not allow their child to listen to the music. But kids get to do, they do whatever they want to do anyway. It's, it's all on social media. Kids killing their Exactly. So I have, you know. But a lot of kids don't saying, do what they want to do. And I, and a lot of kids don't do what they want to do. In some school huh. systems, Brad, you can't, you're not even allowed to tell a child no. That's a problem. Yep. Yeah, that's There's a problem. There's no boundaries. <laughs> We used and to everybody's scared teachers. of everybody, but the kids ain't scared of nobody. Right. Right. Yeah, okay, my, but Rick, Rick, yeah, Rick, my, Rick, 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 Rick,
on, on Facebook, kids fighting teachers. I wouldn't it's dare think about putting my hands on, on, on Coach Critton and Coach Jones, uh, Mr. McClaney, all these teachers. Are, well, I wouldn't think about uh, jumping okay, up or Rick, talking. Huh? That's that's the way you were raised. That's what, you, you, that's what we're yeah. talking about. Your kid, why, why is your son not out shooting people? Why is my son not out shooting people? It matters how you raise your kids. That's what I'm talking about. It's influence. So the artist understanding their influence and the impact of their words and also the parents understanding that you got to check in with your kids. How are you doing? Are you happy? Like every parent should really evaluate. Like how often are you asking your kids, how are you doing? How do you feel? Are you happy? I know a you lot know? of happy and, yeah. kids, Maria, but they love these artists that talk about pain, that talk about killing themselves. And I themselves, understand most most people don't take people. it literal, and they won't act out, but you, you have to acknowledge that people are influenced by people that they admire. They are influenced it's by them. It's not going to stop, yeah. unfortunately. Well, I, I'm just I trying to be y'all. optimistic about it. But I know it. a lot of parents who have kids that aren't out doing this stuff, and there's a, there's a difference between the parents who just let their kids raise themselves with no boundaries, with no limitations, with no we gonna, ever saying no. Right. We, we gonna, and the, par- and the parents that continue. actually put their foot down and put their foot on their neck. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Let's do it, baby. Gotta change the station, so turn the dial, trying to catch a break. And then I hear crazy ass Ricky Smiley. On the radio. Get out your bed. It's time to wake up. Ain't nobody there. All right, y'all, Rick's Mountain Morning Show. Uh, uh, top of the hour, y'all. We got Latoya Luckett with us in the studio. Thank you for joining us this morning again. Um, uh, we're sitting here having a, having a conversation about about gun violence and uh, you know dedicating the show to the three young men that lost their uh, lost their lives yesterday. Uh, uh, Devin was like. Uh, uh, a mentee, uh, a nephew. We had a great relationship. We text and talk all the time, and uh, and we lost him. He was he got killed Sunday night, and you know it just uh, all of the stuff take off getting killed that affected me because I knew them. We interviewed them. They would come on the morning show. Um, I, I remember seeing them backstage at birthday bash that the morning show used to host uh, all the time in Atlanta and. And now this, and we were having a, a conversation about just about gun violence and this generation. What they uh, Maria made some good points about what they're listening to. Uh, Brad made some good points about hey, it ain't gonna change because these kids are obsessed with these phones and and access and music. And we we're talking about how uh, they just get to do everything, they get to have everything, and and boundaries not being set. And here's the result. So I wanted to know what you think. Uh, uh, let's go to the phones. Good morning. Well, good morning. I just want to say it, it starts with the home, but as an educator, it got really bad when you were allowed to have students get away with what you didn't allow in your classroom. Not, you can't send them home. You can't um, write them up. So it's the accountability of parents, the school system, that we're just letting our kids think that they have more power than than the educator, than the church leaders, and even the parents. I didn't allow a lot of what happened at home. It didn't happen in my class. So when I had parent-teacher conference, oh, ma'am, no, ma'am, that's not going on in here. But at home, it was. Well, I'm calling from Shreveport, Louisiana. Shreveport has one of the highest the crime violence right now, and a lot of it comes from the kids, the teenagers. They're the ones out here committing a lot of these crimes, and I think the parents are struggling because we're losing our kids to the street, and then the parents, when they are trying to discipline their kids, they're now having to face criminal charges. So I don't know what the resolution is, but I think it's a struggle both ways. Like, we're losing the kids to the street, and then the police, when we discipline our kids, and they come after the parents. Good morning. Tomorrow, I caught up from Cleveland, and I believe that it was the grandparents who was on that crack who was outside, and they had their kids, time and Sharice inside, raising their other kids. Kids raising kids, and that's the reason why, because all of the crack epidemic, and everybody was outside playing, and now kids outside raising each other. I just recently stopped working for a youth program in the city of St. Louis, and I actually found out that some of the parents are actually buying these teenage kids guns. 
Well, I'm, I'm 59 years old. I remember when Maury Povich and, and all of them was having them women on the show and they was complaining about the music and how the music was going to influence our community. And it turned out to be true. And not only that, the drugs in our community is playing a great big part in all this murder and, and all this uncontrollableness. My thoughts are that there were four young black men whose lives were changed on that day, the ones that were killed and the ones who did the killing, and the fact that his father says that he was being bullied and how we as a community have got to learn how to treat each other better. Yeah, my thoughts, I agree with what Special K said. You know, parents know their kids. Everybody's not doing that. These kids that's doing that, they don't have nothing, and the parents know they're out there doing wrong, and they harboring them instead of being adults and letting them know what's right and wrong with life. They going right home to those parents, and the parents know they out there doing wrong and then want to sit up and act like talking about they didn't know what was happening. You know your child. Every parent know their child, and they know what's going on, and they let them bring them guns into the house, in and out of the house doing wrong, and the parents know about it instead of putting their foot on their neck, telling them right for wrong. And, and and being being bullied don't justify you pulling a gun, taking somebody's damn life. I got bullied and cracked on, mm-hmm. joked on my clothes, made jokes about my stuff. I had to learn how to make jokes back and, and say mm-hmm. stuff back or whatever, pulling out a damn gun. And that's what that was my point. Uh, uh, conflict resolution or whatever. If you're getting bullied, then go somewhere else or go find somebody else to hang around and blo- learn how to block people off of social media and block people's phone number and get in your own space and protect your energy. You know, my niece Genesis made a great point when she texted me last night. I'm um, trying to find a text message. She said these she said our generation, she's right, right, right out of right out. I'm trying to find a find a text message. She said, I feel so sad about our generation. It's awful because we don't have any conflict resolution skills. That was from my niece Genesis Smith. We was texting back and forth yesterday and I'm like that's a great point you're absolutely right and you know the kids get to do what the hell they want to do and there are no boundaries I don't care what nobody say there are no boundaries there's no consequence for the kids and this is what you get right so if a, 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 a damn a bucket is a boundary a bucket is a boundary what it do it hold water together lines in the highway is a boundary what that mean a red light green light yellow light is a boundary so if it was no red light no traffic light and no lanes guess what happens the cars Chaos. crash guess what happened if there's no no uh boundary for the water the water wouldn't be able to stay together and stay in the bucket and get transfer uh ported to wherever the water needs to go every single thing the clothes on your body is a boundary right there's no boundaries for kids when I tell you women be getting at me for discipline, my grandson on Facebook, they can't stand it. And I tell them, uh, uh, you don't get to tell me how to raise a king because you're not one. And don't ever come on my Facebook page and, and emasculate and undermine me when I'm trying to discipline my grandson so he can be something to your granddaughter. Mm. Period. You don't tell me how to raise a king. And I, I say that with a full chest. I don't care how it sounds. That's the problem. So a lot of kids, I got family members. I try to create kings and try to raise and and try to help. And and the women, some of the women, not all, some of the women encourage, hey, uh, uh, push their kids to you. And some women get jealous of the relationship and undermine Ooh, you and emasculate peace. you. Oh, I've mm-hmm. had one. Oh, I've had mean. one. Totally emasculate me uh, or whatever. Well, why he had to come in this door? Why he don't have to? Because I said so. I don't owe a child an explanation. They don't pay right. for a damn thing because I said so. That's why. You think I'm going to give an explanation to somebody that don't pay for a damn thing? Ooh. You crazy as hell. Yeah. In my house. <laughs> but that's what we was talking about. You're actually parenting. You're doing the you're hard work right. of, of putting your foot on their neck. And letting them know that when you're five, you ain't going to get away with it. Special when you're 12, case. you ain't going to get away with it. And when Special you're 15, case. you ain't going to get away with it. Mm-hmm. Ernest Smiley was not wrong. Ernest Smiley put his foot in my ass. So did Coach Critton. So did uh, Coach Jones and, and Coach Holmes, Little League football, Coach Osley. They put their foot in my ass. Come on. Period. Man. Do the duck Literally. Walk. Get in the bullpen. Run a lap. Bear quad. My grandma, my grandma, like, why you got my grandma? My granddad said, if you can't take it, stay at home. 
drop him off at football practice and leave. That's why we got him there, to make him tough. And it didn't hurt me. And I love the man that I am today. And every ass whooping I got from Miss Avery and Miss Rosa P. Hanks and everybody that put a paddle to my ass, I appreciate it because I love who I am today. That's right. That's and I don't right. play with my grandson. I don't care nothing about no light skin and no curly hair and no cuteness. I don't care about that because that that, that ain't cute when they get 15, 16. Okay. It ain't cute. Yep. Mm-mm. When they get a little mustache and they musty. And when they've been coddled all their life and they can't take being called a name. Somebody might call you a name. The world ain't nice. Everybody ain't going to like you. Get over it. Some people are going to talk about you. Guess what? That ain't no reason to pull out a gun. Deal with it. You got to learn how to deal with what life gives you. Damn right. That's what we got to teach these boys. You can't be overly emotional out here about everything. So, so Kate, Brett, uh, uh, Toya, Maria, Gary, this is what we need to do. We need to start having conversations encouraging parents. We, we have a platform. We need to start encouraging parents to be tough. Just yep. because they dad dead and they dad is not there, you can't overcompensate for the dad not being there by giving them everything. I love my sister. Dad. My sister is a great parent because she really do push her son towards me, her and, and uh, the beautiful stepdad, Roland, or whatever. And I had to tell my sister one day, they dad died of cancer. I said, hey. We, 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 we still got to be parents, still got to be able to tell them no, still got to can't let them do this, that, 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 that. She said, you know what? You're right. You're absolutely right. She did, trying her best to try to overcompensate compensate for the dad not being there because cause, mm. cause boo-boo died of cancer or whatever, but I had to have a conversation with my sister, and she respected it and appreciated it, and now mm. he's on the right path, headed in the right direction. That's so good. And that's what we got to do. Uh, we're going to be talking about this a lot more. Uh, Because if we can't do a damn thing, as we can change, help influence the mindset of the parents and the grandparents that's raising the kids to say, hey, it's not a good idea to give them everything. Here's the last point I'm going to make, Tori, and don't don't y'all ever forget this. Everybody listen to the radio. Give kids more of what we had Mm. as opposed to what we did not have. Yeah. Yes. You like how you turned out, Latoya? Yes. Brett, you like how you turned out? Mm -hmm. And I have rules and regulations. Give them what we had. Take the garbage out. Get up. Wash the dishes. Exactly. Put the tablet down. My grandson, you can't bring that damn tablet downstairs. That's a pacifier. You don't need a damn tablet to eat breakfast. You're going to eat breakfast without the tablet and look at us and talk to me. You ain't going to have no damn tablet in church. Come on, man. That's right. Ricky, I had to mow the lawn. Okay. My mom paid her room. What? You want to go to where? Astro World? Where are you trying to go? My whole house Uh needs to be clean. Paint my walls. Yes. Mow my lawn. it. All the things. (laughs) Like there was, there wasn't no free fall. Come on now, right? I had to earn everything I had, and uh, that's what we need to talk about.